Hello and welcome back to Car Mechanic Simulator 2015 or in this case Leaf Simulator yeah if there's something the game's best at it's probably not Leaf Simulation but that's not what we got it for so that's alright good I don't remember what we did last time so there that's the <laughs> that's the summing up done so here we go here's our options want to earn a bit more cash before we go to the auction although we could probably buy something cheap at the auction and do it up and sell it for a profit uh, I th think we did a fast back last time actually so let's do let's do this it's like a big job which makes a bit of a change from all the small jobs oh, there's a nice neutral boring color let's see what needs to be done quite a nice little logo or star logo so what's this? This is the Salem Spectre. Oh, I see. This is the non-fastback. It's like the original, the uh, updated version of the... It's like an 80s or 90s version of the 70s fastback. Or something. I don't know. Throughout cars, I don't know what I'm talking about. So, fin fix all engine problems. Engine is working, but it's choppy. Or filters. More filters. Brake problems and gearbox. Alright. So see some chocolate straight away there. That's the filter. And that's the fuel rail DI. Hmm. Wonder how deep we have to go. Probably have to go quite deep. Um, but it's good to get an idea. So before we start, let's do an OBD -B test. OBD. -B -D -B -D -B -D -B. <laughs> Can't help myself. OBD. -B -D -B. <laughs> Woo. Alright. Uh, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some deep down engine issues. Okay, and then the blow test will tell us whether the pistons are shagged as well. <sighs> what have we got to say for themselves? There is some piston recon rod issues, so we know immediately we have to go fairly deep in the engine, so we can just get on digging in. It's a modern V8, so it'll take a fair bit of dancing about to get into but that's engines for you do, 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 do. that's right it's time for the bullseye music apparently <laughs> I don't know why my brain just goes to bullseye music oh dear that's the trouble with uh, talking on autopilot uh, is that sometimes your brain goes no nope, got no idea what to say next I'll tell you what how about some <laughs> some bullseye music. All kids love bullseye, right? I mean, most people watch this. They not say most people watching this. Of the three people who watch this, um, bullseye is probably not that well known. Uh, unless you're all English, of course. Mind you, even then, it's old now. They did try and revive it because, of course, it's classic northern television. Oh dear. Anyway. It's not that great. Right, so now taking the uh, heads, engine the head covers off, we can attack the timing gear. Take off the tensioners, and then get the belts off. And then all these bits come off. This water crank pulley looks a bit chocolatey. The alternator is chocolatey. It's all, all chocolate all the time. see some chocolate at the bottom, it looks like the oil pan might be chocolatey as well. Now it looks like the steering, uh, what was that, the ste whoops, power steering pump, I'll zoom in, what was that, E? The e zoom in, no? Oh, I thought I pressed the button that zoomed in, apparently not, I'm just mad. Or madder than normal, that's perhaps a bit better description. Alright, so now we can take the timing cover off. And then we can get to the cam gears and get the camshafts off. Once we've taken the timing off, of course. Uh, cam gears, camshafts. There we go, and now the head school. Ah, once you've d detached the exhaust manifold. Excuse me. 
bacon sandwich is definitely slightly burpy. The best kind of burps. If you want to be reminded of anything you've eaten, bacon sandwich right up there. Hello, it says. Oh, hello. I remember eating you shortly. Shortly ago. That's a, that's a sentence. <laughs> uh, ah, happy memories of bacon come to resurface themselves. Right, oh, what's that? That's the oil pan. That's the filter. Okay, so we need to pop it up on its orange blocks. Look, orange. I spent an experience point on the colourings of my posts, and I can have them. Three colours, and that's if you include grey as a colour. No, so that's two colours. <laughs> Blue and orange. Blue, orange and neutral, I guess. Right, so. Let's line ourselves up. And then do the whoops, do the deed. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Nice chocolatey oil. Bloop, 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 bloop. Quite a lot of it. Oh, there we go. And then take the oil drain out of the way. And then we can remove said chocolate pan. There we go. Take its chocolatiness away. And then we can remove the pistons and conrods from the top now. Okay, it's worth checking. The crankshaft is red. The amount of times recently I've taken everything with the crankshaft out <coughs> and then wandered around going, well, what, what is it that I'm missing? Why why isn't everything being discovered? And I eventually work out I need to take the crankshaft out. And of course, to do that, I'll need to remove the gearbox. Uh, and there's gearbox issues anyway, so it'll, it all fits. And that's all the crank cap thingies. So now we can remove the pistons and car rods. And we have to remove them all, even the ones that are nice, because we have to take the crankshaft down. We have to take everything out of there. Oh. Was there one missing? I've never seen that before. I don't suppose I remembered uh, by arrival. Does that mean they're all down the bottom? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, eight. Oh, okay. So maybe I'd already take one out. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, I'm not going to question it, because my memory's so terrible. I might as well have taken it out without realising. But <coughs> I guess you could watch the video back and see what happened. <coughs> I'm not that bothered, you know what I mean? Nah, I mean. Right, so, drive shaft has to be removed to get into the gearbox. go, and now we can uh, remember the starter mode has to come off first, leaving this big black hole, look, yeah. nice dimensional uh, holes, that oh, reminds me of having a glitch on GTA the other night, uh, one of these space places where you can get inside a building, so these are safe from exterior issues. It didn't seem that you could shoot out. Sometimes you can hide yourself inside an object and shoot out of it. So it means that no one can shoot you, but you can shoot out. So obviously it's a bit cheaty. But it didn't seem to be that good a spot. So um, Right. So, of course, briefly talking about something else. I forgot what I'm doing. Uh, Alright, let's check. Let's check the list. Oh, look, the list is full. Now, we did do some tests. So it might be that I know that, say, this ignition coil is uh, busted, but I haven't removed it. Obviously, I know I have removed the ignition coils, but that's just an example. Okay, so there's a part not discovered here. The engine choppiness. Now, as we've removed basically the whole engine, I'm going to go right ahead and assume that that's the fuel filter. Pro tip. Yeah, you can see it's chocolatey from here. Fuel pump. Not whatever I said. So there we go. <coughs> That'll be the last thing for that list. Engine oil and filter. We've drained the oil. Replaced the filters. We need to take out the air filter. Brake problems. We've got the gearbox out. Okay, so we need to take out the air filter and the, do the brakes. Okay, so the air filter needs it to be down, so we might as well reduce it. Reduce its height. What are we talking about? So let's take off the fiddly clips. 
And that's the air filter out. Okay, and then it's break time. Yeah, breaks. Everyone loves good break fun. Do 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 ah. There we go. So, break time. Not much to say about breaks. They're fairly boring, but easy to do. There we go. I guess the people actually fix breaks in the real world probably say roughly the same thing. I wish they I wish I bet they wish it was this quick though. Yeah, I've taken all your brakes off. What do you mean? I haven't even unscrewed the first bloody brake thing. Oh, done. Ah, hooray for simulations. Like the real thing, but not like it enough to be annoying. So, is that all the brake issues? Yes. Okay, we've got all the gearbox issues. So, it's time to chase things. Time for lots of chasing. So, there we go. That's the fun part of the video that you all enjoy. Um, <coughs> belt tensioner, cam gear, belt tensioner, cam gear, general cam gear, camshaft V8, and crankshaft V8, camshaft V8, crankshaft V8, engine head times 2 V8, engine head. Two and two fuel rail DIs. Fuel rail DIs. As we got engine. Fuel rail DIs. Uh huh. Uh, one, two, and then it's an idle roller A and three ignition coils. Idle roller A and three ignition coils. Uh huh. And intake manifold V8. V8 oil pan is a V8 oil pan. Piston with con rod uh, times two. And serpentine belts. A and B V8. Serpentine belt A V8. Serpentine belt B V8. Two sparkies and a water pump pulling. is working, but it's chopping. So I need an air filter, fuel filter, chick, 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 chick. fuel filter, oh, fuel pump as well. Oh yeah, and ignition coils now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So God knows if these are the same as the ones I already bought, but okay. Engine oil, yeah, oil filter V8. Did I buy one of those? Probably not. Oil filter V8. Air filter, fuel filter, oil filter, brake problems. Oh, brake problem. Four times brake. Uh, two discs and three pads. Pads, okay, and a clutch plate and a pressure plate. Alright, there we go. That was that job done. Now it's time to put it all back together as per the huge. Uh, that's what the kids say. That's, that's not what the kids say at all. But, you know, it's nice to make it sound like I'm hip and I know what I'm talking about. Despite the fact I'm much, much too old to uh, think anything like that is worth doing or transpiring. As transpiring? Aspiring to be like. That sounds like to transpire. It's like perspiring, but different gender. Uh, Huma. Yeah. <laughs> that earth thing, Huma. Or indeed, extremely strong lack of. Alright, there we go. Yes. Been playing some Project Zomboid recently, and I was wondering about doing a let's play on that. But generally speaking, all I'm doing is uh, lots and lots of soaring of logs to get my carpentry level up. This is not particularly exciting to watch. <laughs> I don't understand why there's fewer let's plays of Project Zomboid than there are of edited, uh, 
edited stories, if you like. Alright, there we go. Uh, oh, and then we've got to put it back down again to put all the things in. So, yes, and of course, oh, that was what I was going to say. Yes, of course, and I've just recently managed to get my carpentry up high enough to build some stairs to get um, a second level. Uh, so I can have a wall and, you know, do the old sheet rope uh, job so that nothing can come in. Or they have to beat the walls down to come in. It's not a weak point of a door. The doors are so weak. The doors you make, they can bash them down really easily. So yeah, so um, I'm <laughs> so I've made some stairs, and of course the first thing I managed to do was fall off something and break my leg. <laughs> I was reading on a, uh, a forum somewhere where a guy said, "Oh, I didn't think there was any breaking uh, mechanics in the game," so I was jumping off, <laughs> jumping off uh, first floor windows trying to break my legs. And I couldn't manage it. I'm thinking, well, great, because I, I broke my leg as soon as I sort of coughed at being not on the ground. Uh, and the broken uh, bone mechanics uh, in Project Zomboid are pretty harsh. Well, I mean, it's a fairly harsh game, obviously, but... Uh, so what happens is that you have to splint your leg and uh, and that sets the bone. You also have to um, put a bandage on to stop any bleeding, if there's any bleeding. So you can take the bandage off and obviously if it's bleeding you just bandage it up again. But to find out whether you uh, your bone is healed, you have to take the splint off. And if the splint, if the bone hasn't already healed, then that, that apparently um, resets the bone setting uh, thing back to zero. Well, it doesn't say whether it resets to zero, but it it, it sets it back. So the idea being, that if you take off the splint too early, you are effectively re-breaking your leg. So. That's quite frustrating, because so basically what you have to do is you have to wait until you're, um, because you walk very slowly, as you might expect, with a broken leg. So you, you, apparently the thing to do is to wait until your walking speed is pretty much back to normal, and then you know it's fixed. But of course the trouble is, if it's the first time you've ever done it, because my walking, it's been days and days and days and I've just been eating and sleeping, which is the other suggestion for healing. Eat a lot and uh, sleep. It also, it means that I've been upping my cooking ability. Obviously, very important. I have basically cooked all of my uh, supplies. But no, so basically, um, it you get to the point where you think, right, well, I'm, I'm walking pretty fast now compared to how I was walking for ages. And then you try it out, but no, your leg is still broken. It's just it's getting better, I assume. But that means it's restarted the fracture, or at least that's my uh, understanding of things. So all that leads me to do, which is what I normally do in these sort of games, is to do a save. So I save, which is basically you quit out the game and you find the folder where the save files are and you basically just copy the folder because there's a save folder for each of your main games. So you just copy a backup of that and then you go back into the game and you, you try and take off your splint and your leg breaks again and you uh, quit out and go back to your original save. It's a bit tedious, but my God, the choice of uh, staying, <coughs> of starting your broken leg yet all over again. Cause it could be, it could be like an in-game month or something. Apparently, for it to heal, it depends on your you know, healing abilities and your luck and how bad a break it was and what what you've broken. And I also uh, hear that it might be to do with how much you move around. But of course, well, after I just after, as I'd broken my leg, I was still in the middle of upgrading my defences, so I had to do a lot more walking around, building things until everything was ready and I could relax. So that probably didn't help. So mainly at the moment all I'm doing is standing next to the cooking area, cooking, eating, and then sleeping on a chair that's nearby so I don't have to move very far. And about three or four days of that seems to have helped. I mean this is after a week or so of, you know, the original dicking about. So yeah, Project Zomboid. Pretty hardcore in some senses. And I'm playing it on a relatively easy setting as well. I've got it in sandbox mode <coughs> with very few zombies. Because uh, the survival uh, <laughs> mode was just, just too many zombies, and I was very poor at killing them. And sometimes I'd spawn right in the middle, you know, in a, in a little room in the house, and there'd be zombies banging on the window already. And I'd have like, you know, a butter knife or something, which would last about three zombies for all I'd get uh, overcome. So a bit frustrating. So I put it on a slightly easier setting, which doesn't really teach you how to deal with the zombies, but it teaches me how to deal with the rest of the game a bit better. So that's that's cool. And it's good fun. It's kind of like Minecraft in a lot of senses, the idea that there isn't really a, an end game, uh, an end goal, sorry. It's more a case of doing what you want to do and 
uh, making your own aims uh, and such. Although obviously they're adding more and more to the game all the time. So there will be NPCs at some point apparently. And uh, maybe vehicles. And, and of course you can play multiplayer. I mean, if I was playing multiplayer I wouldn't be able to make time speed up which is one of the things I've been doing to help uh, get through the um, broken leg. So you, you, you eat a load of food and then you make time pass a bit more quickly until you're not as full of food and then you uh, eat, slow it down, eat a bit more food, speed up again. It's all fairly easy to do with keyboard presses and stuff. <coughs> but yes, I must admit I thought I'd got past the broken leg phase last night when my movement speed suddenly picked up. Uh, saved and fiddled about only to find out that no, it was still broken. Just I can move a lot better now. But of course now the temptation is that I run out of food to actually go and uh, forage some more food out. I say forage, go and loot more food out of surrounding houses. But of course the, the more you do that uh, from your base, the further you have to go to get new stuff. So, a bit of a catch-22. Uh, so, yeah, interesting. There you go. It's five minutes to talk about a completely different game. So where are we at? Uh, oh, I haven't got the fuel pump in, or done the oil, but most of the other stuff's done. Oh, that's pretty good, considering I've been chatting away, not really thinking about what I'm doing. Alright, so let's put some oil in, then find out what else I've forgotten. I've put the oil pan on, at least, so when I put the oil in, I won't just tip onto my feet. <laughs> uh, here's a thing that happens. Right, here we go. We all know the score now. Do it until it tips up a bit. Give it another second. And that should do the job, and then be smug by pulling out the dot oil dipstick. You don't even have to look at it, just go, yep, see, done. Because you know, you know and I know, as the song goes. So you go, it's worth 15 grand. Awesome. And didn't have to do something I'd forgotten at the end. I'd suggest we've probably got enough money to go to the um, auction if we wanted to buy a car, do it up and sell it, as opposed to keeping. Uh, yeah. So there we go, thanks for that, thanks for listening to me chat about Project Zomboid. Always fun to <coughs> watch someone play a game and have them talk exclusively about a completely different game. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was. <laughs> Good, and I'll see you in the sense that I see any of you uh, next time. Au revoir! Or, you know, just bye. <laughs>